Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yambaghi li jalali wajhika wa adhimu sultanik. Allahumma ftah alayna fituh al-arifin. Ya arham al-rahimin. Ya Rabb al-alamin. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Last time we saw how uh, the uh, um, wealthy people of Quraysh came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wanting uh, him to uh, uh, get rid of the poor Muslims because they don't feel it's uh, uh, good for them to be equal to this low class uh, in their eyes. So what, uh, and we know how Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course, will never get rid of the uh, of those blessed people so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is now giving us an example and this is the example of the rich idolater and the poor muslims it's a similar example to those rich group uh, to the rich group and to the poor muslims who were with Sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, this is the story about a paradise on uh, on this earth, uh, which many people are deceived by it. So the story deals with the fitna of money and the fitna of wealth, which are the pleasures of this world. So we have to be careful. We will go on with the story. We will read the story, inshallah. So we will. We are on ayah thirty-two. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا رَجُلَيْنِ." So, O Muhammad, present to them the example of two men. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa taala gives examples so to attract our attention. So he gives us stories after stories, and these are not just stories about the old nations. No, we have to take the the lessons, the morals out of these out of these stories. So if there is something that we do not understand, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us an example to clarify it. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give the example of the two men telling them the story of what they did. So tell the, uh, the, the people what the story of these two men is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا رَجُلَيْنِ جَعَلْنَا لِأَحَدِهِمَا جَنَّتَيْنِ so we, we granted to one of these two men, to one of them, two gardens, jannataini min a'nab. So these gardens of grapevines. And we know grapevines are most delicate and uh, <clears throat> important fruit. So this is the story of the two men. One is a believer and the other one was a non-believer, an arrogant person. So the non-believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him two, two gardens, two beautiful gardens. So he was, uh, he, he forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he just enjoyed the gardens. He even forgot the day after. And the other man is an example of a poor person who was not uh, paying attention to this dunya. Dunya did not deceive him. He understood that dunya is just uh, for this life and it will be gone. So the real life will be the day after. So there was, there was, um, a conversation between these two uh, uh, persons, these two men. So the, the arrogant man bought a land with, the, with his money, his share of money that he inherited. 
So both of them inherited some money. The, the arrogant man bought a land with his share, with his money. While the good man <clears throat> decided to do something else. He bought food and fed the poor. He bought clothes and uh, gave it to the poor. So he gave all his money as a charity for the sake of Allah. The arrogant man got married and had children and many servants, but the good man had in mind that he will have al hur al ain was in, the, in uh, paradise. The arrogant man <clears throat> started to lose all he gathered in this worldly life. And this is the reason, and this is the result of the punishment that Allah gave him. So how, how did that happen? So we said, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, جَعَلْنَا لِأَحَدِهِمَا جَنَّتَيْنِ مِنْ أَعْنَابِ So there were the, he had two gardens of the grapevines. وَحَفَفْنَاهُمَا بِنَخْلٍ And we have surrounded both gardens with palm trees. So we made a border around the grape trees with palm trees as if to protect the delicate grape trees. So we know dates and grapes are important types of food for man. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this man these two great gardens. And we placed between them fields of crops. So it was, it was not only the dates and the grapes, but other crops too. So each of the two gardens produced its fruits. So the output was in maximum. There was no shortage, no less of fruit and other crops. And did not fall short there of anything. The gardens gave best quality and quantity. So it wasn't only quality, but the quantity was amazing. And it wasn't only quantity, it was the quality that was the best. So the land was just. The land always appreciates your hard work. So it gives you your right. If you plant a, uh, a seed, it will give you a tree. So it will give you a lot. The land is generous. You do your job and it will reward you. Now let's stop for a minute and think, what does this remind us? Think of your kids, imagine them as a land. The more you take care of them when they are young, the best they become when they get older. We want our kids to be like the young Sahaba who were raised under the care of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Sayyidina Usama was only 17 years old when he led the army. 17 years old. Now imagine in, at our time, a 17 years old uh, young man, what does he do? Once a mom uh, came to me saying, my son is, is 20 years old now and he does not pray, he does not fast, he is not practicing. And then she started crying and crying. And she said, it's all my fault. I did not take care of him spiritually when he was young. I never urged him to pray. I myself was a bad example. But a few years ago, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided me and he showed me the way again. So now I feel bad for my son. 
So the point of this story here is we need to pay attention to our kids since their early childhood. This is similar to plowing the ground, preparing it, planting the seeds, watering these seeds, taking care of the land, taking care of the seeds, taking care of everything that we are preparing, taking of the, the, the weeds that will grow. Only then we can enjoy the fruits that come out of it. So the harder you work in your early life, the better you take care of your responsibilities, the, the, the greater the reward will be later. You have your children as an amana. You have to take care of these, this amana. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here, وَلَمْ تَظْلِمْ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا So the ground is generous. The harder you work in it, the greater the outcome will be. Just do your job. Make dua and Allah will take care of things. But you need to do your job. You need to be initiative. Without your work, your children will not grow up righteously. Guide them, always be on top of them. Just, just notice what they are doing. Just be uh, in control of everything and you can. Of course you have to give them space but once you prepare them to be ready to take their space, then you can relax. Because at that time, they will be able to know what is right from what is, what is uh, wrong. They will be able to see what is white and what is dark. So things will be clear for them, no gray areas. So prepare them, work hard when they are young. This is when you get to enjoy them when, you, when they get older and when you get older. And we caused to gush forth within them a river. So Allah did not leave it just for the, for the rain to water the ground but he gushed the river through these two gardens. So he made it even easier for the farmer, for the man, for that man who was given these two gardens. And he had fruit. So, and other than fruit. The word thamar does not only mean fruit, the fruit we eat, but Everything that is an outcome is called thamar. He had money, money beyond, the, beyond this. He was not only a farmer, he had gold, he had silver. In, uh, in the Arabic language, when we say, الْوَلَدُ ثَمَرَةُ أَبِيهِ We mean the children is, the child is the fruit of his father. So the word fruit, as I mentioned, includes it all. It includes everything. It's not just the physical femur, it is also everything that include that is included in this summer. So now the main the, uh, the man had everything. But what did that make him? How did that affect him? Was this wealth a reason or a source for him to get closer to Allah? And this is how we should, we should look at our wealth. This is how we should be thinking. Is wealth getting us closer to Allah? Or is it pushing us back and away from him? Are we paying its dues? Are we paying zakah? Are we paying sadaqah? We all know that when we do that, 
then the 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 uh, our mummy will increase it will be purified and it will increase are we paying its dues to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are we thanking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessing that he gave us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wala in shakartum laazidannakum if you thank me then i will give give you more are we thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings he has given us? For the blessing of sight, for the blessing of hearing, for the blessing of uh, 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 being uh, perfectly created? Are we thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that? Do we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the center of our heart? Or is he in the, on the margin? Where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in our life? Is dunya deceiving us and getting us attracted? Is it getting us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or are we taking these blessings to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We have to think, we have to think of the poor who don't have the blessings. We have to think of the sick people who don't have the blessings we have. We have to think of everyone around us. And the more we get to contemplate about these blessings, the more we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them. So we should always have in mind that wealth with all its branches, whether money, health, knowledge, everything is a test. And we should know how to use this wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's good to be wealthy. It's good to know, uh, uh, to have money, but this money should be in our pockets, should be in our accounts, but never in our heart. Our heart should be the, the place, the clean place, the clean, the pure place for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the Quran for, for the light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for his righteous people but not for dunya it's good to have dunya but not in our hearts some of the sahaba of the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to be very rich And they never stacked their money. They used to spend it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people not only spend for the sake of Allah, but they urge other people. There are so and so people who are poor, just give. Who can give? Who can donate? So they would have their reward and the reward and also the reward of everyone who gave for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of the Sahaba, some of the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to prepare a whole army for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's good to be wealthy if we know how to use this wealth. So what happened to those two men? So one of them was so wealthy, the other one was not. They were once together and <clears throat> the owner of the two gardens said to his companion, to the poor one in the course of discussion, فَقَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ أَنَا أَكْثَرُ مِنْكَ مَالًا وَأَعَزُّ نَفَرًا I am greater in you in, uh, than you in wealth and have a mightier uh, entourage. I have more children, 
uh, I have uh, more ser uh, servants. Uh, I have everything I want. I have everything I need. So he was arrogant. He was not a good wealthy, uh, wealthy person. So what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this wealth to that person. But what, what did he do with it? He abused it. So, وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ He entered, he went into his garden, having been unjust to himself. So, he was unjust in his disbelief. He was rebellion. He was arrogant. He even denied the day after. So what did he say? He said, I don't think this will ever perish. He was looking at his gardens and he was admiring it. He was allowing himself to, to be deceived with the wealth that he, ha he has, he's uh, 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 watching in front of him. وَمَا أَظُنُّ السَّاعَةَ قَائِمًا And I don't think the hour will ever come. So he denied that the day after. He denied that the resurrection after death. Then he said, وَلَئِنْ رُدِدْتُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي لَأَجِدَنَّ خَيْرًا مِنْهَا مُنْقَلَبًا And if... If only, if indeed I am brought back to my Lord. So he, he had just a thinking that there was no day after, no resurrection. But let's assume there is. I surely shall find better than, it, than this, than this, the, these blessings that I'm having. I'm sure I will find better than this if I return to Allah. If I return to him. So this was what he said. The, the companion was shocked. He doesn't want his friend to be that bad. And he cared, he cared about uh, about his uh, his friend. So what did he do? He, he tried to tell him that what you are saying is wrong. So he said, So his companion said to him during their discussion while they were conversing together, How can you disbelieve in him? who created you from dust, then from a sperm drop, and then proportioned you as a man. He well prepared you. And these are all milestones. He's reminding his, his friend about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did to him. Lakinna huwa Allahu Rabbi. Lakinna, but as for me, as for my part, I believe that he is Allah, my Lord. The word lakinna is lakin ana. So the hamza was deleted and the na was merged into the, uh, the noon was merged into the previous noon. So we have the noon with Shadda. Lakinna huwa Allahu Rabbi. Allah is my Lord. I will never associate. Wala ushriku bi Rabbi ahada. And none shall I associate as a partner with my Lord. I will never say what you are saying. 
but I acknowledge the oneness of Allah. Who Allah Wahda? He's the Allah. He is the one to be worshipped without any associate. So what is this man doing? He's giving an advice to his friend. And again, we link this to the advice of the mom that she gives to her children. Each and every mom would love to see her children better than her. The only person who loves something for her, for others more than for herself, is the mom to her kids. If a mom does not read Quran, she, she wants her kids to be able to read Quran. She would take them to, to teachers of Quran. She would do her best. So she would get, give them what she could not get for herself. So when she when they do something wrong, she will advise them. She will she will tell them. She she because she doesn't only care about their dunya, she cares about their akhira too. So this is very important. We have to take care of the akhira. We have to take care of our kids. We have always to give them advice. And this is the advice that this person has given to his friend. He was worrying about his akhirah. He didn't want him to get uh, to get uh, punished. But that person, that arrogant person, insisted. So he insisted on on being bad. He insisted on on associating other gods with Allah. He insisted on on doing that. So. وَلَوْلَا إِذْ دَخَلْتَ جَنَّتَكَ قُلْتَ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ إِنْ تَرَمِ أَنَا أَقَلَّ مِنْ كَمَالًا وَوَلَدًا So he is trying to tell him what he should be saying. It was better for you to say when you enter your garden, ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله This is only what Allah wills. There is no, no power, but uh, uh, only the power of Allah. Ma sha Allah, la quwwata illa billah. As I mentioned, we are reading stories, but we have to take the morals, that we have to take the lessons of this story. This is a lesson for us. Whenever we have a ni'mah, whenever we see something nice, we say, ma sha Allah, لا قوة إلا بالله. It's not you that your power made you do this. No, it's Allah سبحانه وتعالى who wanted you to have this. You have a garden. Who created this garden? Who who worked on the garden? Yes, it's you. Who took care of the land? Yes, it's you. But who created the land? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to return the blessings. We have to think that we can do nothing if Allah does not want it. We have to be, to know how to talk to Allah. We have to know how to be polite with Allah. And we, we saw this. So many uh, 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 examples in Surah Al-Waqi'ah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَفَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا تَحْرُثُونَ أَأَنْتُمْ تَزْرَعُونَهُ أَمْ نَحْنُ الزَّارِعُونَ Have you seen that seed which you grow? Is it, is it you who made it, who make it grow? Or are we the grower? لَوْ نَشَاءُ لَجَعَلْنَاهُ حُطَامًا If we will, we could make it dry. And you will not be able to do anything. Again, he mentioned something about the water. Allah said, Have you seen the water that you drink? Is it you who brought it down from the clouds? Or is it we who are bringing it down? 
If we willed, we could make it bitter. So you, you cannot use it. You cannot drink it. Don't you think? Don't, can't you be grateful? And more examples are there in Surah al as we saw earlier. So when you get a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you have something that others don't have, just say, Ma sha Allah. لا قوة إلا بالله. Never be like like Karun. What happened to Karun? Karun was so wealthy. So when they said to him, "Why you don't thank Allah for this?" He said, "قال إنما أوتيته على علم عندي." I was only given it because of knowledge I have, because of the hard work, because of the knowledge. So what was the reward? What was the punishment? And we caused the earth to swallow him and to swallow his home, to swallow his, his wealth. And there was for him, no company to aid him, no one to help him uh, against the wish of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the point. Just say, MashaAllah, la quwwata illa billah. Fa'asa rabbi an yu'tiyani khayran min jannatik. So maybe, it may be that my Lord will give me something better than your garden. You never know. Never say that this, I am rich, this one is poor. Allah can take your wealth and give it to the poor and make you poor. وَيُرْسِلَ عَلَيْهَا حُسْبَانًا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ and will send on it a punishment from heaven, a calamity. Then it will be, then it will become slippery earth. So slippery, so it's not good even for walking. So these two gardens will perish if you do not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just an advice, just an advice. So what happened? Again, nothing. That man was so distracted that he could not even understand the advice that his friend was giving him. And sometimes this happened in this dunya when someone has a calamity, when someone has something bad. He is so sad to the degree that he, as if he locked his brain, he, his intellect, that he will not be able to process any word of advice, any word of uh, help, that will be given to him, because he's thinking only of the calamity. Oh, my father died. Okay, I uh, so so much sadness, so much grief, so much to the point that the person will not understand or will not even hear what other people's uh, people are saying to him. And this is what Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said to the woman who was weeping at the grave of her son when he died. She didn't know that he was Rasulullah before be, be, behind her. So when he was talking to her, he said, just he was calming her down, but she said, Leave me alone. You didn't, you, didn't, you didn't have the same problem that I have. You don't have the same calamity that I just had. 
She didn't know that he was uh, Rasulullah. And later when they told her, she went to him apologizing. Ya Rasulullah, I didn't know that you were the one who was talking. And he said very wise words. He said, إِنَّمَا الصَّبْرُ عِنْدَ الصَّدْمَةِ الْأُولَى You have to practice patience at the time of the calamity, not later. And when you practice patience, you have to practice it fully. Your heart should be patient. Your mind should be patient. You should be patient. Accepting what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, has put us through, is the first step of practicing patience. So we accept, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. We had an accident, he had an accident, his, his leg was broken, his back was not. He, he lost his, his finger, but he did not lose his eye. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even at the, at the hard times. This will be when you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time, then Allah will help you during the hard time. أو يصبح ماؤها غورا فلن تستطيع له طلبا. So these things might happen to your land or even to your garden or even the water disappears into the earth. It will not be flowing anymore. It will not be gushing anymore so that you will never be able to seek it by any means. You cannot dig down to get water. You cannot. There is no means to get the water out. This might happen. Again, that non-believer was so arrogant, was so my, uh, uh, heedless that he did not understand anything that was said to him. وَأُحِيطَ بِثَمَرِهِ فَأَصْبَحَ يُقَلِّبُ كَفَّيْهِ عَلَى مَا أَنْفَقَ فِيهَا وَهِيَ خَاوِيَةٌ عَلَى عُرُوشِهَا so what happened? His gardens were ruined. His fruits were encircled. Everything was ruined. When he saw that, he was clasping his hands together in a gesture of regret and grief for the wealth he had lost, for the time he had invested in his land, for, for everything that he, he has and he lost. Everything was destroyed. وَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُشْرِكْ بِرَبِّي أَحَدًا So, he said, he wished only that time when he saw that, he as if he was sleeping and he woke up. Only at that time, he said, would I had ascribed no partners to my Lord. I wish had not, I had not associated anyone with my Lord. Only at that time. So we should be careful. We should not be waiting and waiting and waiting until we are at that time. No. وَلَمْ تَكُنْ لَهُ فِئَةٌ يَنْصُرُونَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ He had no group, no clan, no children, no one to aid him, to help him against Allah or against what Allah wished again. No one to prevent what Allah wanted to happen. And he could not defend himself. Nothing. 
he was a loser. No one would be able to help him. So he is the one who would just experience the result of what he did. No one to help. When Allah wants something, then it will be. And Allah does not care if all people are helping one person. If Allah does not want that thing to happen, it will not happen. That's it. واعلم أن الأمة لو اجتمعت على أن ينفعوك بشيء لم يكتبه الله لك لن ينفعوك بذلك Just remember that if all creatures were together to help you get something that Allah did not predestine to you they will not be able to do it That's it It's Allah's order, Allah's wish, whatever Allah wants, that will happen. You want something, I want something, but Allah will do what he wants. What does this mean? Then, the authority is completely for Allah, the truth. We can read the word wilaya and walaya. What does this, how can we do that? <clears throat> Al-walaya uh, is al-wali al-ladhi yansuruka, the person who would give you victory, who would help you. That's al-wali. Al-wilaya in the day after. Limani al-mulk al This is al-wilaya. Who is the uh, control today? Limani al-mulk al Lillahi al-wahid al-qahar. It's only for Allah. So what happens? Hunalika. <clears throat> At that time, when everything happens, when people go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, when they are there, the losers will know that they wronged themselves badly. They will understand what they have done in their, in their, in their life. They will know how, how bad their deeds were and they will feel sorry for themselves they will feel sorry for the punishment that they will have and they will feel sorry for for losing the chance to enjoy the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the winners so they are loser loser But what would feeling sorry be a help? Nothing. They would beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for another chance to go back to dunya, to do good, and then to come back. But Allah would say, no, no, that was a word. It was a word that he said. Allah sent prophets, gave intellect, so a human being can choose what is good and what's, what's wrong. He is the best to reward and the best for the final end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highly rewards the good deeds and justly 
punish. So this is the story of the two people, of the two companions, of the believer and the non-believer. There are so many uh, points that we can get from this story. And a good one is to remember who to take as a friend. عاشر من ينهضك إلى الله حاله ويدلك على الله مقاله Be friend with a person who, whose state, الحال, will get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whose words will always remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the type of a friend you should have. Do not be deceived with the blessing, but always remember the one who gave you the blessing. Always thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings that he has given you. Do not look up at those people who are richer than you. Do not wish that you have the wealth they have. Pray for them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, bless their blessings, but, and wish for yourself something that is similar and always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you guidance to perform his right in your wealth, to do zakah, to do sadaqah, to give people, to be good to others, never to get proud, never to get arrogant. So these are some of the lessons of this story. And inshallah, we will go on with the uh, next week, inshallah, with the sixth part of the tafsir of Surah Al-Kahf. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Ya rabbana laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wa jika wa'adhimi sultanik. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.